Hi there gang, Paul Newsom here from Swim Smooth. This week we're going to be showing our nutrition tips. Now, I'm a little bit like a fish out of water here. I'm in the kitchen, not my normal foray, and I'm trying to get a, a little bit Jamie Oliver on you this week. We get a lot of people asking, you know, what we should be eating before a swim, after a swim, some dietary tips just for general health and well-being. Now, I make no claims of being a nutritional expert, but I'm just going to share with you a couple of tips which I've used over the last few months and years to help me with my own swim training and just general well-being. Now, over the last sort of five or six years, I've spent a lot of time marathon swimming, and for marathon swimming in cold waters, I generally have to put on quite a bit of weight. Um, just recently, I've tried to shed around about six or seven kilos, and I'm gonna share some of those tips with you right now. I'm gonna talk about three changes that I've made to my uh, training and uh, my nutrition strategy, starting off with the faithful soda stream. Now, as a kid, I used to be quite partial to a Coca-Cola or Orange Aid or what have you, and even up into adulthood, I thought, yeah, how bad is it to really have some of those sugary, fizzy, fizzy drinks? It wasn't until recently that I sort of really started to take heed of a lot of the uh, health experts out there by really drastically cutting down on how many sugary drinks I'm actually drinking. And what I recognized as well within myself was it wasn't really the sugar that I was after, it was actually the fizz. I liked the fizz of a, uh, of a soda stream or a soda water um, for my, uh, for my um, general nutrition. Now, a lot of Elite cyclists talk about this idea of actually filling themselves up on soda stream or soda water to make sure that they don't feel hungry all the time. So they're trying to reduce calories to try to lose weight, to ride well on the bike and the climbs, etc. They'll often talk about using uh, soda water to help with that. Now, we're not talking about dropping massive amounts of weight here, but I do find that this helps to satisfy me quite a bit. So I'll often have a couple of these drinks during the day, just plain water, popped into the old soda stream there. And, um, and you know, away I go. So that's my first tip. I am um, using quite a bit of fizzy water just recently. Second tip is the faithful egg. Now, I generally have one or two boiled eggs per day, and I've only been doing that for about the last four or five months, and I found it a really great way to satisfy any of those hunger cravings. I'm usually on the pool deck coaching from between about 4.30 a.m. up until about 1 or 2 p.m. every day. So it's quite a long day, okay? The day is done quite early, but it's a long day for me. And I find it very, very hard to fit in any substantial food. Just cracking open a couple of boiled eggs, which I prepare on a Sunday afternoon. I do a dozen eggs on a Sunday afternoon. I've got them ready, grab them out of the fridge, down on the pool deck, and that's been a really good way for me to help to satisfy those cravings. It also helps to satisfy and smooth out the mood swings that you often get if you do generally feel a bit uh, cranky when you get a little bit hungry, and I know certainly I feel that way. So, soda water, egg, quite a good thing. And then what I'm gonna share with you now is my Powerball recipe here. Now, back in January, I was thinking, you know what, I need to lose a little bit of weight, I need to get a little bit more healthy. So I went into a couple of health shops and found these power balls, or paleo balls they were. Now I don't subscribe to any particular diet, I'm not vegetarian, I'm not vegan. I have generally in the last couple of months tried to reduce a lot of the gluten and uh, lactose, that have, so milk, reducing how much milk I've been drinking and dairy products, etc. But I wouldn't say I follow a hard, fast diet, I generally try to stay um, fairly broad spectrum, if you like. But one of the things that I have been trying to reduce is how much sugar I'm taking on board. And these little paleo balls, or I call them my power balls, are a great way of doing that. I'm gonna share with you that recipe now. Now you'll need something like a Thermomix, if you have one of these, or a, a food blending uh, machine to basically blend up all this uh, gear together. Now we're gonna start off with dates. Grab a set of nice fresh dates here, and with these, just simply pull them apart, take out the, the stone there, and obviously pop them there into your mixture. Let's use maybe three or four of these here. This recipe is not hard fast, so it's not something where you need to be exactly accurate with the ingredients. I'll show you roughly what I put in, but let's see how we, uh, see how we go there. So we've got four dates in there. Now, Dates and these dried fruits that I'm using right now, of course they are high in sugar, naturally occurring sugar of course. But these power balls are quite high in protein as well as you're going to see in a moment and of course they're entirely natural. So let's pop in a few dried figs there. Figs are a great source of, um, of energy, especially if you're out for a bike ride or what have you. 
just pop one of those. So I've got four figs. I've got a dozen or so um, apricot halves in there. So maybe, yeah, a dozen or so apricot halves there. Put in a bit of uh, coconut. Now, when I first found out about these power balls, I was, um, the number of ingredients in them was around about six or seven. But over the last few months, as I've been getting more and more into using these, I have maybe one or two of these a day before a swim, after a swim. just helps to sort of satisfy those cravings and boost you full of a bit of energy. Um, so the ingredients originally were about six or seven. As you can see here, I've got about 12 or even 15 products that I tend to put in. Um, you can mix and match and just find your own happy halfway, but it's a great little snack. So here we've got some craisins, some dried cranberries. So cranberries, got the desiccated coconut in there as well. Let's put in a handful of almonds. Bosch. Handful of cashews or other nuts that you like, maybe some walnuts or something like that. There we go. Sprinkle from these chia seeds. Don't know how you say chia where you're from, but uh, that's what I would uh, call it. And this paleo protein mix. So this is a superfood. Has some uh, brown flax seeds, kibbled sunflower seeds, natural diced almonds, Waltania, golden flax crumble. All sounds quite exotic. So let's just pop a dash of that in there. There we go. Now to add a bit of a chocolatey taste to this, but still being wholly natural and whole food like, I'm going to add in these cacao nibs. I'll give it a nice chocolatey sort of taste to these power balls. Now we're going to use this linseed, sunflower seed and almonds, this ground up a little bit later on to actually mix the balls together and give them a bit of a dry coating so they don't all stick together. So let's just leave that to the side for a moment. And just coming up to the last few products, we're going to put some pumpkin kernels in here. Add a dash of those. A little bit of protein powder, so I've got some pea brown rice protein powder here, just to raise that protein content of these power balls. There we go. And satisfy some of those hunger cravings. Good. Now, you can also add in some other bits and pieces. I quite like this here. This is uh, raw buckwheat. Depending on whether or not you're trying to stay gluten-free on these products, you can obviously mix and match according to your own dietary requirements there. But one product that I have been using quite recently is this UCAN, Generation UCAN. It's some superfood with some, uh, it's gluten-free and has a high super starch, they call it. The only energy source of its kind. It's quite an expensive product. It's util usually utilized by mixing it in some water, even a little bit of milk before you do a training session. This one is a chocolate flavor. I like to put in maybe half a scoop of this into there as well. And that creates a very nice, satisfying taste. And just think about some of the other products that I generally use for my racing. When I won the Manhattan Island Marathon Swim, this product 32 GI was all the rage over here. It's a low GI energy drink, so it helps us, again, to sort of sustain um, energy over a long period as opposed to getting those horrible spikes and then the big drop-offs. So that's a great product. I'd love to utilize that even when I'm racing these days. And from our friends over in the UK, uh, Precision Hydration, these sweat salts, they also come in like a sort of uh, vitamin brocca tube as well, which you can just drop into some water. It's a, um, an electrolyte drink. They come in three different strengths. You can jump onto their website or follow them on Twitter at the ex sorry, at thesweatexperts.com. So go and check them out over there. You can do a little sweat test check, work out how much sweat you're actually losing or how much electrolytes you're using, uh, losing, and then uh, work out how much you need to actually use. So that's a great product, which I use just to keep on top of that uh, electrolyte balance. Okay, so we've pretty much got everything in there. Now, the product itself, not sure how well you can see that, is quite dry, just like that. So in order for this mix to actually all combine together, it's well worth your while popping in a little bit of coconut oil in here. So the coconut oil will just help to combine the product together. And now if I put my lid on, 
Now this takes a little bit of trial and error. You know, I haven't, you notice how I haven't been that strict about how many ingredients or exactly how many teaspoons I've put in here and there. So I'm going to blend this now for one minute. It's going to be very, very loud. Blend it for one minute on maximum, um, maximum power here on the Thermomix. And after that minute, I'll take it out and take a look at it. We're looking for something like this, approximating this look. Okay, so here we go. It'd help if I turned it on first. Jamie Oliver, I am not. Okay, we're good. Focus on my catch. It's amazing what you can do in the kitchen to help you improve your swimming. Okay, here we go. Done, one minute. Perfect, this looks awesome. So right in there, we have a mixture which if we just take out a handful, and you wanna, you wanna be able to squeeze this together and for it to stay together on its own accord. Now I've maybe, if I'm gonna be super critical, I've maybe popped in a little bit too much coconut oil there. It is slightly moist, but that's where this linseed, uh, ground linseed is gonna come into into its four. So you want something about golf ball size, table tennis uh, ball size, ping pong ball, and then you come over to the little tray where you've laid out your uh, linseed, sunflower seeds and almonds ground up, and then just roll it in there. And then, here's one I prepared earlier. We end up having something like this to join it in our little glass bowl. And I'll typically pop this in the fridge all week now, it doesn't take all week to cool it down, of course, but what I normally do is then just have a, a big bowl of this on the start on the Sunday, and every day, just take out a couple, pop it into my lunchbox, down to the pool deck, do my coaching, have a little bit of a swim, and usually have one of these um, power balls just before I swim, maybe afterwards as well. And that, combined with my boiled egg and some fizzy water, are the three things that I've changed in my own diet in the last few months, I've trimmed down a little bit here, hopefully, and, uh, and also just feeling generally a lot better, being able to sort of satisfy those blood sugar cravings. So, like I say, I'm no nutritional expert, but I'm hoping for your own swimming benefit, this has been useful. Let us know how you get on.